Hi, my name is Michael, and on this episode of Michael's Toys, we are going to be playing with... Blocks. I'm sure you've played with blocks before and have noticed that it's quite fun to put one block on top of another. <laughs> it stays. You can keep doing this and build a tower as tall as you want. But what if you don't want the tower to just go up? What if you also want the tower to go to the side? How far can it reach over to the side without falling over? Well, this question is known as the block stacking problem, and its solution is the leaning tower of liar. You can actually mechanically build a leaning tower of liar just by feel, by taking a number of blocks. Here I've got five. And notice that when I put one block on top of another, that top block can be pushed out, but only to a certain point, beyond which its center of gravity, the point from which gravity appears to be pulling it down, is no longer above the support, and a torque is produced, and the object rotates off. So if I make sure the center of gravity is just above the support, it will stay. But now I can treat both of these blocks like a single object and balance them on top of a third block. Now just by feel, not using math or engineering, I'm just gonna see how far out both blocks can overhang this third bottom. Whoa, okay, that was too far. But we can rebuild. Whoa, perfect. Fourth block. Okay, it's actually not heavy, I'm just really weak. Okay, now this is, can it go farther? No, it's about, whoa, okay, fifth block. Here we go, fifth block. Again, I am pushing this to the limit, the extreme at every step of the way, but it's rough because of course I'm doing this in real life. Now let's see if, oh, whoa. okay, this one needs to come in. Nice. So we have built here the beginning of a leaning tower of liar. I say beginning because this tower will have no end. You can keep doing this forever and your tower of single blocks can reach out to the side as far as you want, but there are diminishing returns because the amount of overhang we get with each new block goes down and it goes down by a specific amount. Now, again, I did this with blocks that aren't really perfect. They've got holes in them. They're not completely homogenous and I'm not that great at balancing things. But if you look at if you look at the gaps closely, you'll notice that here at the top, the top block can overhang the second block by about one half of its length. But then the second block overhangs the third by about a quarter. And then we have a sixth and then we have an eighth. A half, a quarter, a sixth, an eighth. Next would come a 10th, a 12th, a 14th, a 16th. This is a harmonic series. The numbers, the amount of overhang becomes smaller and smaller for every new block we add. It's, in fact, it turns out to be one over two n, where n is the number of blocks. Here we have four blocks and the overhang is one over two n. Two times four is eight, so it's one eighth. But even though the amount of overhang we can get keeps getting smaller, it never reaches zero. So these blocks can overhang as far as we want as long as we have enough of them. I brought this concept up to Adam Savage and in his workshop, we built a Leaning Tower of Liar with more than five blocks. Michael, you want to build something or demonstrate a thing. I want to build a Leaning Tower of Liar. A Leaning Tower a leaning, of Liar. Yeah, it's I all about hangover. I, not not the not the not, bad kind, the but bad the interesting kind. kind. Yeah, okay. I have a playing card here, yeah. and it's pretty obvious that it's going to balance on its center of mass, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, I can overhang the card on a table by lining up so that exactly half of the card is off the table and half is on. Right. It's balanced. You can go out a full card length after using only, I believe, uh, four cards. Okay. What about what about two card lengths? Two card lengths. You're going to need thirty-one cards. Three card lengths? 227. <laughs> so, now I know you're thinking, what about six? Yeah, it's like six a Six card length, 100,000. 100,000. Right. Because each next overhang is yeah. smaller than the last. I see. And the order is, is simply one half, one quarter, one sixth, one eighth, one tenth, one twelfth. Playing cards are great because they're so thin that you know 31 of them is like not even as thick as a deck. Right. Uh, and 200 of them 
is only four, four decks. decks. Yeah. So it's actually not that tall. But they also are usually built with this kind of air cushion. Right. And, and they, they and slide, they slide across bit. each other. See, and they're also hard to measure these these fractions because okay. they don't have So um, we could do this out of wood. I have some I have some cheap plywood that um would be we could cut out two hundred and forty some odd pieces in a mm -hmm. in a few minutes. That would be incredible. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, by your measure, we should be able to hang out two full lengths of these. Yeah. Within thirty-one of these bricks. That's right. I, I I'm, I'm so dubious about that. Okay. Do you want to work on the these twelve top ones while I play around with the? Well, yeah, the top yes. ones. And this one will... Yep, yep. I see it. Back this way. Back this way. Oh, perfect. This doesn't strike me as it's going to work. Oh, oh! Okay, hold on. Here, can you... Uh, let's see here. Let go. Whoa! Huh. Oh. Let me see here. Here's the one that you drew on. Yeah, but I'm just, uh, oh. Look how close. I'm three quarters of an inch away from two full. I didn't think that was possible. So there are four slats that are not even above the table. That's mind blowing. Okay, will you come protect it again? Yes. I want to get that last three quarters of an inch and I can do it. I'm pivoting on the back here. So I think this is the most we're going to get. And I'm about to mark it. Bottom one is there. Top one. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. We're within a half of an inch of two complete lengths of this hanging out over the edge of the table. I am freaking blown away by that. This is a structure we see in super ancient buildings. Like really? before um, more you know, permanent solutions were found for stretching things up and across, this worked. Wow, I really dig that. I'm gonna get on the other side. I, I wanna, um, you know, we tried, we tried for years on Mythbusters to think about a proper way to do the straw that broke the camel's back. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and it strikes me as we're... Uh, how touchy is it? I don't, I, I feel I like... I feel like a card place there would, would collapse it. I feel but... like a card place here might actually do it. Ready? Well, yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, oh! oh! <laughs> so, so we were really on that center of mass that right was... here. There's a little more mass on that end. No. That's why this is not a great bridge. I mean, it's a cool looking bridge until yeah. someone walks across it. Once they pass the center of mass, boop, boop, oops, boop, boop. Yeah. it's not balanced anymore. That was That deeply, was really, really fun. Deeply satisfying. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's fun to watch things topple over. So let's talk about toppling when you have an object and its center of gravity is above a support, it stays, it's quite stable. But if I tilt this, a little bit, ah, it falls over. Because at a certain point, the center of gravity is no longer over a support, and that gravity force, actually it's space-time curvature, but we can think of it as a force, 
causes the object to rotate around a pivot point, which in this case is right where it contacts the ground. Falls over. But not all objects have that property. Take a look at this toy. This toy is inflated. It's full of my air, in fact, my own breath. But if I tilt it over, it never reaches a point at which it falls over. In fact, if I let go, it writes itself. You cannot beat it. This is a self-writing toy. And the reason it can always find its way back up is that its center of gravity is not, say, in the middle. This is full of air, but there's also a bit of sand down at the bottom. And the sand is very dense. It's more dense than air, more dense than water. So the gravitational attraction it has to the Earth is not located in the middle of the object geometrically, but it's located quite far down, very near the bottom of the object. So when it tilts, the center of gravity is always somewhere out here, and this kind of a torque causes it to right itself. I can actually draw this out for you using a Sharpie. This might make it a bit more easy. Here is our little self-writing shape. If the center of gravity is low enough, like if I put it down here, it'll be stable standing up like this. But if I turn it, the center of gravity is now here, and down is like this, so the torque actually pulls the object back up. This is called an equilibrium state, and it's a stable one, because anything that moves the object away from this state has a tendency to bring it back. But this is technically also an equilibrium state, because the center of gravity is right above the support. But it's unstable, because in order to make a toy like this balance upside down, I have to be extremely precise, but I'm not. The tiniest change, a little vibration, a little air current, or any mistake in my balancing gets magnified. There are a lot of really fun toys that exploit this property. Here's a super cute little fun one that is a fox and you just can't knock this fox over. It'll roll and spin. If you put it up on its head, it always wants its butt on the ground. It is endlessly fun, especially if you're a baby. A really classic center of gravity toy is the classic balancing bird. Now this is a bird. Um, it clearly looks like a bird, but it balances quite surprisingly. It'll balance right there on my fingertip. And they often come with stands. This one has a pyramid stand. The reason it can balance right on its beak is that the wingtips are weighted. There's something heavy. Maybe it's metal, maybe it's clay, I don't know. But it's very heavy. So the center of gravity of this object isn't somewhere near the middle, the average location of all of its material. Instead, it's drawn out here because gravity is attracting the heavier, more massive parts towards Earth more strongly. So the beak is the exact center of gravity, and as long as the center of gravity is above a support, the object doesn't fall. Quite beautiful. Now I know what you're thinking. Michael, self-writing toys are really fun. They're a great way to learn and demonstrate the center of gravity, geometry, torque, but they're just not creepy enough. Well, luckily, I have an answer for you. This is a Russian doll. It's quite popular um, to give to little children, and it has bells in it, so it makes a noise as it moves. I'd like to leave two of you alone. And as always, thanks for watching. in Australia? Are you going to be in Australia this month, January? Well, so will I, along with Adam Savage. We are bringing Brain Candy Live 
to Australia. We're going to Perth, Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney, Adelaide. It's going to be a blast. Tickets are running out, but you can get them in the description down below. Check that one out. I hope to see you there.